if you're not getting hung from time to time when you are fishing, a lot of times that means you're not putting the bait where it needs to be. Well, hey guys, Tyler Burry here with Bass Fishing HQ. And today I wanna to talk about how to fish a square bill crankbait. This is one of the most useful tools as bass fishermen that we have to go out and catch a bass throughout the year. So stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. Before we get into the video, if you guys are looking for a good pair of polarized sunglasses, you can actually use the coupon code BFHQ at waterlandco.com and pick you up an awesome pair of Waterland Co. sunglasses. They make some of the highest quality sunglasses that I have used. I'm really excited to be partnered with them. Click the link below, use the coupon code BFHQ to get 15% off your Waterland Co. sunglasses. So square bill crankbaits, if you are fishing really anywhere from about seven, eight foot of water and less, a square bill crankbait can be one of the best lures in your tackle box to not only catch a lot of fish, but also to catch some big fish. One of the things that I really love about a square bill and about crankbaits in general, a square bill coming through the water typically deflects off of certain objects and that deflection creates reaction strikes. Big fish that are in the water that may be hard to catch, when a square bill crankbait deflects off of something, they react to it. They can't help but actually go up there and bite it and you will catch big fish on a square bill. So I wanna talk a little bit about square bill crankbaits and then I'm gonna jump up on the front deck. I'm gonna show you how to fish a square bill. If you look at a square bill, uh, obviously the reason it's named a square bill is because the lip is actually kind of looks like a square. Honestly, it looks a little bit more like a trapezoid, but a trapezoid build crankbait just doesn't have the same ring. Anyways, that bill is the key to this bait. That bill really helps this bait to come through some pretty pretty heavy cover. Now, one of the most infamous places that you can throw a square bill is on riprap banks. I think that that is something that a lot of us associate with a square bill, but guys, a square bill was actually designed to come through wood cover and to come through heavier wood cover. When that crankbait is coming through the water and it actually hits a branch or a stump or a piece of wood cover, because of the shape of that bill, it will actually pivot off one of the corners of that square bill and come right over the cover very, very effectively. Now, are you going to get hung throwing a square bill from time to time around wood cover? Yes, you are going to get hung. It just happens, guys. But I heard a really good saying a long time ago and it said that if you're not getting hung from time to time when you are fishing, a lot of times that means you're not putting the bait where it needs to be. If you're afraid to throw that square bill up into a gnarly lay down and you're just trying to fish the outskirts of that lay down with their crankbait, you know, you're probably not going to get hung, but you also might not catch a lot of fish. So when you're fishing a square bill and you're fishing it around wood, don't be afraid to cast it into the, some of the gnarliest stuff that you can find because it will come through cover a little bit better than you might actually think. Another great place to fish a square bill, and it's a place that I think a lot of guys don't typically fish one, is actually on grass flats. In those situations, I think a lot of guys think to throw a chatterbait or they think to throw a lipless crankbait. And while those are great lures to throw in that situation, an overlooked option is the square bill. Now, if you have grass that's matted and very, very thick and all the way to the surface, you're not gonna be able to fish a square bill through that. You might be able to fish a square bill on the outside edge, but you're not gonna be able to fish it through that stuff that's all the way up to the surface. So don't even try to fish a square bill in that situation. But if you kind of have grass that grows off the bottom, maybe it's three, four foot tall and it's three, three, four, five, six foot below the surface, that is a great place, a phenomenal place to pick up a square bill. And the square bill is really gonna present fish that see a lot of chatterbaits and see a lot of lipless crankbaits, a little bit different vibration, a little bit different action. And I always talk about on this channel, doing something a little bit different is really gonna help you to catch a lot more bass. So guys, before I show you exactly how to fish a square bill, I wanna go through my equipment really quick and to me this is really simple i like a seven foot medium power moderate action rod this particular rod that i have here this is an akuma guide select cranking series rod is a graphite rod i really like that when i'm throwing square bills now as far as the reel goes i like a six three six four to one gear ratio reel for the most part if i'm fishing in grass situations i might step it up to that seven one to one gear ratio now as far as the line goes i always fish a square bill crankbait on fluorocarbon line and i'm typically going to fish it on 
12 to 15 pound line. Now, if you don't know this about crankbaits, when you get a square bill crankbait, a lot of times it's gonna say that it runs five to six foot deep. Now, typically the manufacturers use 10 pound test to actually tell how deep that crankbait runs. The higher pound test that you use, if you go from 10, if you go up to 12 pound test, the shallower that crankbait is going to run. Because the line diameter is a little bit thicker, there's more drag when you're bringing that bait in and that drag is going to cause lift on that crankbait. If you're fishing a square bill on 15 pound line, if it says it dives to five and six foot on the package, it might actually only dive to three or four foot with 15 pound fluorocarbon line. When it comes to the square bill itself, Tyler, what are your favorite square bills? To be honest, there is a ton of good square bill crankbaits on the market. Literally every company that sells a lure pretty much sells some sort of square bill crankbait. So now one of the biggest difference in square bills is square bills that are made out of hard plastic and square bills that are made out of wood. Typically, I like to fish the wood baits around wood cover. That kind of makes it easy. Sometimes I will also throw the wood baits on riprap type banks. But a lot of times if I'm fishing around riprap banks or rock banks, and anytime I'm fishing around grass, I typically like that hard plastic bait. And the reason being is I like a little bit more speed when I'm fishing it on grass flats and when I'm fishing it on rock banks. And wood baits can sometimes kind of kick out when you're fishing it very, very fast. Now, as far as the colors go, guys, you can look at the square bill box that I have, and it's all pretty much variations of a shad type color like a white and black back or a sexy shad type color i also have chartreuses chartreuse is probably one of the most infamous square bill crankbait colors out there on the market and i have several of those and then i also have red ones and typically i'm fishing that red in the springtime now a few other options that i really like is the translucent colors if you have kind of a translucent shad color i really like to fish that when i'm fishing really really clean water. Let's jump up on the front deck. I'm going to show you a little bit more about how exactly to fish a square bill. As you can see, we're coming up here to some wood cover. We're coming up to a nice wood lay down. This is a classic spot where a lot of guys are going to typically pick up a jig or a soft plastic lure. And of course, yes, you can catch fish on jigs and you can catch fish on soft plastics in that particular piece of cover. But again, guys, showing the bass something different is really going to help you to get a lot more bites. If a lot of guys are fishing jigs and soft plastics and then you come and you fish a square bill, you're going to be able to catch fish that these guys can't catch. So one of the most important things about fishing a square bill crankbait is you really want to make sure that you're coming at the right angle when you're fishing a wooden laydown like the one that we have up here. As you can see, the lay down, the top of the lay down is actually in the water pointed straight towards me. It's coming off the bank and coming straight towards me. And that's the way that I want to cast. If I cast the opposite way, if I find a, a wooden lay down and I'm on the bank casting outwards, you're going to get hung a lot because you're going to hit those little V's, those little crotches in the lay down, and you're going to get constantly hung. I am trying to hit my square bill off branches as much as I can because hitting it off those branches is really what's gonna be that causes that reaction strike. So I'm constantly, as I'm bringing that square bill through that tree, I'm trying to hit it and roll it off branches. Sometimes if it hits a good branch, I'll kill that bait for a split second and then start it up again. Now, another thing that I really like to do, and you may notice it as I'm fishing here, is I actually kind of like to sweep my rod like so. Sweeping the rod gives me just a little bit better feel of what my crankbait is doing down there. And it also pauses that bait every now and then as I'm doing that. If you're pausing your bait from time to time, you're varying that retrieve, that's going to help you to get more strikes on a crankbait. Now, if you have a piece of wood cover that you really feel like, man, there should be a bass on that, don't be afraid to cast at it multiple times. You'd be surprised at how many times you're casting at a lay down and you're making 10, 15, 20 casts up there and then you get bit. So make sure you make multiple casts at the lay down. Man, it, there's got to be a bass up in that thing. But as you guys can see, I didn't catch a bass there, but I probably made 25, 30 casts at that log and I never got hung up.
Never once. So don't be afraid to put that square bill up in that tree. If you're bringing it from the right angle, you'd be surprised at what you're gonna be able to get that square bill to come through. Now we've gotten to a riprap bank here. This is another phenomenal area to fish a square bill. And like I talked about earlier, I'm actually gonna switch it up to a plastic square bill. In this case, that's just what I kind of prefer. Not always. The biggest thing about fishing a riprap bank is you wanna stay parallel to the bank with your cast. So I'm gonna get really snug. As you can see, I'm pretty snug to the bank here. And I'm actually gonna cast parallel to the bank, okay? And I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna do the kind of the same sweeping action. This is just kind of what I like to do a lot when I'm fishing a square bill. Anytime I'm fishing a crankbait, I really like to do a little bit of a sweeping action. I'm really trying to get that bait to hit off some rocks down there. And then I'm gonna sweep it, pause it, let it float up, let it just act erratic down there. I don't want it to just come straight in. I want it to hit off of everything. The more times it deflects off cover down there, the more times it hits a rock and stops, the better your odds are at catching more fish. As you can see, I'm tight to the bank, casting parallel. If I were to come way off the bank here, like I am right now, and I'm casting up to the bank and then I'm bringing it down, there's only about five, six, 10% at most of my cast that's actually in the strike zone. So again, what I like to do is get really close to the bank and cast parallel. I can feel my, my bait hitting off rocks. I'm sure there's a couple of branches down there that have washed up on the shoreline, but I'm keeping that parallel and now 90% of my cast is in the strike zone. 90% of it, I could get a bite. Now we're out here fishing a little bit of a grass flat. And a grass flat, like I said, is one of my favorite areas to fish a square bill because I feel like a lot of guys are throwing chatter baits and, and lipless crank baits a lot of times. The one thing that I found when I'm fishing a square bill through the grass is speed is your friend. We've got some scattered grass clumps here. They only come about three foot from the surface. So I'm really gonna just cast this bait out there and I'm gonna reel it pretty fast and then I'm gonna pop it once it hits that grass. So like I'm reeling it, reeling it, it's in the grass, pop it out. Reel it, reel it, in the grass, pop it out. That's exactly how I like to fish it. The biggest thing, the reason I like speed and the reason I like to pop this bait out of grass is, you know, when you're fishing rock and when you're fishing wood, you can create a reaction strike simply by hitting that rock or hitting that wood with the crankbait and letting that crankbait deflect. You can't do that with a square bill crankbait in the grass because it's just gonna kind of get bogged down in the grass. So speed, one, is gonna create reaction. The other thing is getting that bait in the grass and ripping it out just like that. And it can be a pretty aggressive Rip. You know, I'm trying to clear that bait of any grass that's fouled up on it so that a fish will hit it. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, comment below if you have a question. I'll see you guys in the next video. This is